factor unfactorable trinomials. So I hope you remember that we said there are many kinds of trinomials which cannot be factored. We need to get product and sum to factor a trinomial. Now here we are going to learn a technique with which you can really factor trinomials which cannot be factored otherwise. So I'm calling it factor unfactorable trinomials. Well these are also special it is it doesn't mean that you can factor each and every trinomial using whole numbers or integers okay. Now let's see the technique it is kind of completing the squares. So I hope you remember completing the squares concept. So we'll use a very similar concept and uh, we will use two things. Let me explain you that. First you know what is a plus b whole square equals to? a square plus 2ab plus b square that is a plus b whole square. Now if I have a trinomial where we have squares on the sides and the center number is twice those two then we can write that as a plus b whole square. Now that is the concept which we are going to use and I'm calling it kind of completing the squares right or to get a perfect square. So the first example given to us is x to the power of 4 plus x square plus 1. Now if you see x plus 1 whole square will be what? x plus 1 whole square will be x square. Let me write this here. So we'll go from backwards. So we'll say x square plus 1 whole square is what? Well that is x square square that means x to the power of 4 plus 2 times these two numbers which is 2 times x square plus 1. So now if you compare this with the given trinomial then we see that one x square is missing. So if I add and subtract x square then I really do not change my trinomial. I am adding and subtracting the same thing. So it is still the same. But it gives me one advantage. That is, it helps me to make the center number as 2x square. So if I combine these first four terms, I get x to the power of 4 plus 2x square plus 1. And I can factor them as x square plus 1 whole square but I'll be left with this minus x square. So let me write that minus x square on the side and bring it down. So what we have? The original trinomial we added x square minus y square. So let me write down the original trinomial separately. That is x to the power of 4 plus x square plus 1 is from where we started. And then we added x square minus x square to that. When you add x square minus x square, then you get x to the power of 4 plus 2x square, that means combining these two, plus 1 minus x square. Now, we got these three terms as a perfect square, x square plus 1 whole square. Do you see that? And minus x square. So we have difference of squares. Now, since this is difference of squares, I can write them as product of their sum and difference. So what do I get? I get x square plus 1 plus x square times x square plus 1 minus x square. Do you see that? I mean, sorry, just x because we have to put. So these are the terms, right? So we are adding and subtracting x square plus 1 and x. This is difference of squares, correct? So that is what you get and we can write them in particular order and our answer will be x square plus x plus 1 times x square minus x plus 1. Do you see that? So that is how we do it. Let me follow this process once again so that you really understand the concept. So we are starting with this trinomial where x to the power of 4 plus 9x square plus 25 cannot really be factored. Now this is like here we have x square whole square and here we have 5 square. Now if the center term would have been 2 times 5 that is 10x square I could have 
made it a perfect square, but I don't have it at present. To make it 10, what do I need to do? I need to add and subtract x square to my equation, right? So what I will do here is that I will add 1x square and I will subtract 1x square, maintaining the trinomial as such. But this makes a huge difference. 9x square plus x square becomes 10x square. Do you see that? And we are left with minus x square on the side. Now this expression is same as the original one, right? So, but with a huge difference, the first three terms now are perfect square, which can be written as x square plus 5 whole square. And then we have minus x square. At this stage, we have difference of square. So we can factor them as product and sum of these two. So we get it as x square plus 5 plus x times x square plus 5 minus x. So that is the factored form of the given trinomial. Let me rearrange. We get x square plus x plus 5 times x square minus x plus 5. I hope you understand the process. Correct? Now, these are two practice problems for you. So I'd like you to adopt this method and practice. Now here, you know it is x to the power of 2 whole square, 3 whole square. So the number here should be 6, 2 times 3. To make it 6, you have to add and subtract x square. How about this one? This kind of typical. You want 2 times 16 to be in the center. That is 32. Now, you want not 2 times 16. 16 is 4 square. So you want 2 times 4, that is 8 in the center. To get 8, what will you add and subtract? 4x square. Do the needful factor in practice. I hope you understand the concept and you are able to do such questions. For grade 12 students, we expect them to do it and they should expect them in the test also at times when they just begin with polynomials. I hope you appreciate it. Thank you and all the best.